This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Thursday, May 26th. Which means... Countdown to the Bulls. 100 days. Okay, keeping it 100. And even 100, or three months and... Like one week. And stuff. <laughs> 100 days, man. Let's go. I like it. Are we 13 weeks away? Is that right? I don't know. But I'm just looking forward to a, you know, a fun, low-key summer, and then, boom, we'll hit it hard Okay. in a hundy. All right. Well, we hit it hard every day. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm about to take three weeks off here in a couple weeks. So yeah. Good for you, Jerem. Yeah. Good for you. By the time you get back, there will be like 50 days remaining. Yeah. That sounds great <laughs> to me. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with a guy who clearly, like me, is counting down the days until BYU kicks off the 2022 football season. I'm more interested in the countdown once we get to 100. Before that, it's like, oh, gosh, it's a long ways away. But now it's like, you know what's in, like, a month? Uh, BYU Football Media Day, and that's awesome. And then after that, it's like, hey, we're only, like, seven weeks away, six weeks away from fall camp. Yeah. It's actually in the summer, as we discuss every year. So, yeah, it's Memorial Day weekend. Uh, you know, we, we begin tomorrow a series of Friday specials, which will be exciting. Deep Blue Volume 6 coming up tomorrow. Monday, we'll have the top 100 plays. Don't at us about Tyler Algiers' punch out not being in there. That was produced before the 21 season. Okay. Yes. We will, it would totally we will figure be in it there. Out. We will figure it out at some point. Real qu- quick hitter. Top 25 play all time? Absolutely. I think so as well. Yeah. Yeah, we Where need to have a conversation. That needs to be. Maybe that's a summer topic, Jerem. Where does the Tyler Algier play rank all time of the top 100 BYU football plays? And are there more plays that go in from last year? I'm thinking that's probably the only play. It's hard to crack. That's a, a, Listen, one of the most enjoyable projects of 2021 for us uh, was coming up with that list. Coming up with that list of top 100 plays was so fun. 100 plays, 100 days away. I need to recalculate my math. It's... 14 weeks, because 14 times 7 is 98 plus 2. So no it's, on-air math. It's 14 weeks from Saturday, Jerem. Okay. Tampa Bay, BYU at USF. Let's go. Tampa Bay, B-A-E for Tom Brady. As Jerem said, we're keeping it a hundy with today's show lineup. Tournament day for BYU men's golf at the NCAA Championships. One team, one mission. Quite literally today on the course. They're the only team that competing Sabbath, on the course. Keep that Sabbath day holy. Their Sunday round will happen today. We'll talk with the director of golf, Todd Miller. Yeah, that's a golf name. Johnny Miller, heard of him. His son, he's doing great things for BYU golf. Talk with him Miller time. to get uh, the ideals of what BYU is preparing for in Arizona. Plus, the fastest prep athlete in the state of Utah. He also happens to be a BYU football commit. His name is Parker Kingston. Incredible hair. He will join us live. Plus, the top linebacker for BYU football in what is a loaded group. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Jacob Hatch reports BYU is hiring Cahill Fennell as its new assistant coach in men's hoops. He was at Louisville as an assistant coach last year. Also, Hatch reports Missouri State will return the game last uh, from last season to Provo on November 16th. Now, uh, Fennell has started following a bunch of BYU media personalities. That feels pretty smoky, and we trust Jacob Hatch as well. So we'll see mm-hmm. if and when that's an official thing for BYU to replace Chris Bridge. BYU baseball had a great season, all things considered. Just ended in a disappointing fashion, uh. losing 5-1 to one last night. In that opening round of the West Coast Conference Tournament in Stockton, California, by a final of 5-1 to one at the hands of LMU, the Cougars trailed early 3 to nothing. could never really recover. They gave up 15 total hits. So BYU ends the season 33-21 and 21 overall, 16-12 and 12 in conference play. Congratulations to Trent yes. Pratt, his staff, on yep. overcoming a lot of adversity. Injuries to Andrew Pintar, who was the best player. You lose your head coach midseason. Great season, just a disappointing finish. Yep, absolutely. Five Cougars qualified for track and field nationals yesterday. Michael Whitaker and the Javelin, Caleb Witskin and Zach McWhorter, our guy from pole vault. Mm-hmm. Casey Klinger and Brandon Car- Garnica in the 10K as well. The women's team begins competition today. 
Good luck to the Cougs. Yes, good luck to the Cougs on uh, the track and in the field and also on the golf course as we talked about BYU men's golf playing their quote-unquote Sunday round on a Thursday because, of course, BYU does not compete on Sunday. So they are the lone team on the course today, 5.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific. First round will be on Friday, second round Saturday, and then whatever BYU does today will be calculated on the back end of that. The field is cut in half after the third rounds are all calculated. The final round begins on Monday. Good luck to the guys. Coach Summerhays again. Coach Miller will join us to talk, to talk about just what a unique dynamic it is to be in that situation. It's super unique because the women's soccer team played on a Monday, not a Sunday for the national title, right? There are these few instances where BYU, because it doesn't compete on Sunday, competes in a unique way. In golf, it's the weirdest because it's before, not just delayed later. And so good luck to the boys. Former Cougs in action uh, in the NWSL this weekend. Michaela Clough from the Orlando Pride take on Ashley Hatch in the Washington Spirit Friday, 7 Eastern. And Cameron Tucker in Gotham City FC with Batman. No word on if Robin will suit up. Face Angel City FC on Sunday at 8 Eastern. Angel City. Is that LA? I don't even know. I would assume because it is the City of yeah. Angels. <laughs> What's Gotham City FC? Is that New York? Yeah. Yeah. New okay. York, New Jersey. Yeah. Even though. Isn't Gotham partly in Pittsburgh as well in one of the Batman movies? Well, yes, but Gotham is... It's New York to... City. Yeah. True. Former Cougars Paul Lasique and Calvin Whiting on the rugby beat with the Utah Warriors of Major League Rugby take on the L.A. Gilton or L.A. Giltinis? Giltinis. Giltinis. Like a martini. Oh, that's right. You told yeah. me about this. The made-up name. The guy because that owns the team. Adam Gilchrist. Yes. Australian owner. Gil Teenies. Wouldn't it be cool to own a team and then you just said, I'm like, the Jordanites. Yes. Like, what? What is that? The Gil Teenies. <laughs> Please say Gil Tennis. I want the mascot to be essentially my last name. It's fantastic. Well, the when Lin you own the team, do whatever the you Lin want. The Lynn Toners. <laughs> the Lin what? What? <laughs> the Lynn Toners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, good luck to oh. Paul and Calvin. Saturday, 4.30 Eastern against the Giltinis. When you're rich, you can just make stuff up. Yep, it's great. And Big Game Boomer, which is also uh, an associate content producer on BYU Sports Nation. we got to start paying him at some point. Top 50 list features the best linebackers in America. Ben Bywater, number 29 on the list. Led the Cougars with 100 tackles last season. We'll discuss coming up in What's Trending. Is he BYU's best linebacker? Where's Keenan Peely? Where's Peyton Wilgar? Where's Max Tooley? It's a good group. I like it. It's a great group. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. The Lynn Toners. The Lynn Toners. <laughs> it sounds like a barbershop group, doesn't it? <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> 100 days away from kickoff which gives you plenty of time for ice cream over the summer. Thanks for jumping in on that. A I long really vacation. Yeah. But still, there is excitement around the number 100, especially considering what BYU football has done in each of the last two seasons. 11 wins in 2020, 10 wins in 2021, including 6-1 and one against the Power 5. Jeremy, we feel like we know a lot of things about this team, so let me ask you, what are you most confident in and what's your biggest question mark about the BYU football team 100 days away from the game against USF? I am very confident in the BYU offense because I believe in Aaron Roderick a lot. I believe in Jaron Hall. I believe in the this offensive line and the receiver, these receivers. I'm excited about Christopher Brooks. I'm excited about Lopini Cato and Jackson McChesney and these guys. The offense is going to be awesome. I'm, I'm excited about the improvement that the defense is going to show as well, that, that a healthy BYU can be really good. Can an unhealthy BYU be good as well is a question we got to figure out. So, yeah, question mark is, can an unhealthy BYU at certain positions be okay? Depth. Can the defensive line get a pass rush without a blitz sometimes? Um, that's a question I have. But I, I'm, I'm very excited about this season. I think we've talked about it. I, I've raised my sort of, man, just, yeah, seven and five, eight and four. It's nine and three regular season with this group. This group's built the last two years for, for a year like this. It's the last hurrah on independence. BYU is going to be ready for the Big 12 from a competitive, athletic, financial, facility, recruiting standpoint. We'll worry about 2023 with sort of the exodus of a bunch of good players. 
Can you fill those in with good recruitment and development? I've loved the way that Peyton Wilgar has gone from walk on to star, Tyler Algier from walk on to fifth round pick, um, which is awesome. So let's see three star Zach Wilson uh, to number two pick. This has been fun to watch. I'm very excited. Only 100 days away, baby. Okay, I'm going to add to your list of what I'm most confident in, the BYU coaches led by Kalani Satake. It's amazing they've kept that staff. I am confident in the staff. They've been around for a long time. You brought up Aaron Roderick. He's been an offensive genius. He worked so well with Zach Wilson, and then you had to wonder, okay, well, what's he going to do with Jaron Hall? I think a lot of those questions were answered last year, were they not? So, yeah, I'm with you. I'm confident in the BYU offense. I'm confident in the BYU coaching staff, which did anything change at all other than adding additional staff and support members this offseason? No assistant coaches left. No changes. Which is rare, which is rare. For as successful as BYU has been, the fact that they can keep Aaron Roderick is notable. The biggest question mark I have is on the defensive side of the ball, and it's more about what BYU is going to do schematically to try and create more disruptive plays. Everyone just says simply, got to get more pressure on the quarterback. Got to get more pressure on the quarterback. Is it about that, or have we learned that Elisa Tuiaki and the defensive staff are good at creating disruption in other ways? How are they going to do that? Like, of course you want to get to the quarterback more, but that is not the end-all, be-all, especially for BYU football. I just want havoc, and that comes in different forms. Correct. That is sacks and tackles for loss, but it's also forced fumbles. Interceptions. Fumbles and interceptions. BYU's been pretty good the last Hit couple passes of passes at the line. Right. I, I just want the defensive line to, like, is it too much to ask the defensive line to be close to what Utah had under Kalani Stock? I don't feel like BYU's been that quite yet. Like, who is that? El- like, can BYU have a, a very good to elite pass rusher? We're, we're hoping it's like a Tyler Batty, right? And, and he's been young. He had the pressure on him last year of kind of becoming the guy. He's got the lip balm and IL deal now. So what does that mean? Yeah, a, a little more pressure without having to blitz would be nice because then you can have seven in coverage and feel confident on a second and uh, six that you can create a third and long, and now you can really go uh, pin your ears back, as they say, and go after the quarterback. Even looking back at 2020 when BYU did have an elite-level defensive lineman in Kyrus Tonga, they just implemented some different tactics. And Kyrus didn't come up with a huge sack number. He was a huge block eater. Right. And, and that's, they, it's hard for me to, I guess, compare to that year just because of the schedule. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not even remotely close to no, what BYU I mean, will ever but, play. Again. You know, the best teams that BYU played in 2020 were Coastal Carolina, Houston, UCF, um, and that's kind of the top, the top of the list, right? But yeah, and the, those Boise are, State. Those are like Coastal finished ranked. Like that was a great game. Like, but other other than that, um, they, on an average year, those would be the fourth, fifth, and sixth best games. I believe in the coaches. That's where my confidence begins and ends in what they're able to do with the roster that they have right now. I actually forgot what I'm most confident in. I forgot. Ryan Rico. (laughs) Ryan Rico will just punt the (laughs) crap out of the ball all year. Are you still standing by the fact that Ryan Rico was the best player on the BYU team last year, or have you come back around to Tyler Algier? Obviously. (laughs) Um, The best player at his position is is Rico, but Blake Freeland is challenging. For Ooh, that's my new you take. Still, you, that's your. That's my new you take. Still, you're still taking that hot then, take out there, Ryan. R- I believe in Ryan Rico. Like I, if Ryan Rico ran for mayor of Provo, that's my vote. Ryan Rico is better at his position on this team than Blake Freeland on the offensive line. Yes, and Jaron Hall at quarterback. Here's Ryan's problem: he wow. doesn't punt enough, so he doesn't qualify. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd be like, dude, he was third in the country. That is like spicy. He is. Punters are people, too. That is a Top- spicy take. Woo! T- 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 hey, they can vote and stuff now, which is cool. Punters can. Topic two. Big Game Boomer, a.k.a. BGB, has been by water. Mm-hmm. Um, who anciently, you wanted to be by water. Been, been by water. I like that last name. As the 29th best linebacker in his latest top 50 linebackers list. Spencer, he had a breakout freshman year. Of course. Fan- fantastic. No doubt. But is he BYU's best linebacker? Man, big game boomers think so clearly because there's no Peyton Wilgar and there's no Keenan Peely and no Max Tooley. Like, big game boomer. Should we call it uh, big game Ben? BGB stand for big game Ben Bywater? Big game Ben Bagley Bywater? (laughs) What? Listen, I believe in Ben Bywater. And you look at the pictures and the work that he has put in. Like, he clearly, yeah, he's the yoked guy, right? He's the anti Oh, man. Hey, he's he's the all picture guy. That's like why the I did first that. Look at day of fall camp, there will undoubtedly be multiple tweets from media members saying like, 
Ben Bywater looks the part. Dude, he's just he looks power the part. five biceps. They, that's going to happen the first day of fall camp. With He will be the all-picture team first day of first fall First team all-pictures, yes. I love it. <laughs> like like Hinkley Ropati two yes. years ago was like first team all-pictures. Oh, yeah, he just looks the part. He's just next-level athlete. Because if you're super strong, you are very good at your position. What? Here's the thing that Ben Bywater has working in his favor. Mm -hmm. He was thrust into yep. a prominent role last year yep. and, frankly, was not perfect. He was really good, but he had a steep learning curve. There were some hard learning moments for Ben Bywater in his freshman yeah. season. Yeah. That will all make him better. So I understand. And you look at the numbers. Numbers were really solid. Like his athleticism, his strength helps him just make plays, even when sometimes he was out of position. Like he'd make up he for it with his athleticism. He learned a lot. Yes. Yep. While that has happened, and he clearly is going to take a significant second year jump, Peyton Wilgar is still the best linebacker on this BYU football team, hands down. Amen. Keenan Peedley is right there as well. But P Peyton, let's talk about numbers over his career 168 tackles, 16 and a half tackles for loss, five picks, two forced fumbles, five passes defended. He's BYU's top uh, linebacker NFL prospect, I believe. You want havoc, Jerem? It starts with yes. Peyton Wilgar. He has got to like at at the. He's got to run a good forty to ensure being drafted. Probably is something that I've been told uh, from someone who who knows what they're talking about with this. But um, I I like this group, right? Max Tooley makes plays. Ben by by what? Keenan Peely is a a stud middle linebacker. He had 17 tackles against Arizona. He was going to lead yeah. the team in tackles before he was injured halfway yes. through the third game of the season. Yes. This is a nice group, right? This is a nice group. So, it's been the best linebacker team. No, but he's he's a really, really good player that's going to have a really good career at BYU. Ke and yeah, Keenan Peely. Yeah. My, at the end of the season, we might be saying, man, it was Keenan Peely who was the Maybe best it is Ben at the end of the year. Maybe like, it's Ben. Yeah, I – and I'm confident in that group. Let's go, baby. Yeah, that's, that's this is a good problem to have and an interesting conversation when you have that many loaded linebackers in that group. Our question of the day. We move back to the 100 number. 100 days until BYU opens their season against USF at the home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What are you most confident in? And what's your biggest question mark surrounding BYU football? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is... The Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Swooshlight59 on Instagram. Three words. Puts on blue goggles. Gotcha. You need them for this. Blue goggle alert. All caps blue here. Jaron, period, four, period, blue Heisman, period. I believe he will shock the nation with his play. My biggest question mark is the defense. Can BYU step up and play even better than last year? 79th yeah. in the SP Plus yeah. after last season out of 130 teams. So it'll be better. That's bottom half, middle of the pack-ish. We learned from Bill Connolly that if BYU can be a top 50 defense, he feels like they are pacing for a quote-unquote special season. The yeah. offense maintains, and that defense jumps up about 30 spots. Watch out. Yeah, it, it all depends. Like, if you have Peyton Wilgar and Keenan Peely for the whole season, no doubt you'll be in that situation. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, coming up, this is weird. <laughs> Why Winnie the Pooh fans should shield their eyes. Oh my goodness. What? And he may be the fastest man soon to be on campus. Is he going to be a dual sport athlete? We'll ask him about it. Parker Kingston, BYU football commit for now. Mm -hmm. Ed Eyestone lurking somewhere. This is BYU Sports <laughs> Nation. <laughs> this portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group. Serving Utah since 1968. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers.
Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history. There is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're here for you. Call us today. Do you not know the groom's name? I missed it on our first date, and it's way too late to ask. Whenever you experience something funny, the first thing you want to do is, like, share it with your loved ones. Seeing that comedy, like, helped us do things, like, we want to use that to help other people in a way. We had one kid whose make-a-wish was to come to Studio C. It made me be, like, these goofy sketches uh, mean a lot to people. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us tomorrow for a special BYUSN Deep Blue Volume 6 featuring Fu, Satiki Ali Atiki, Trey Stewart, and Gideon George. Noon Eastern tomorrow on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We're hanging out live in Studio B on a Thursday. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Our first guest of the day is the fastest high school athlete in the Beehive State. Hey. Yes, the fastest man in Utah. And he is also a BYU football commit. Parker Kingston making his BYU Sports Nation debut. Parker, welcome to the show. How are you this morning? Good. Thanks for having me. Congratulations on winning the 100 meters in this Class 6A state championship. At BYU, by the way. At BYU against a yeah. bunch of your future teammates. What was that experience like for you? It was fun. Yeah, it was definitely fun competing with uh, Cody and Smith. Now I just got to try and get um, Smith to come to BYU for us. Okay, and you cut the hair, dude. It, it looks good, but you used to have even longer hair, did you not? Yeah, I did. I definitely did, but it was annoying, so I... <laughs> I trimmed it off so I could run faster. I was going to say, is that why? Did, did that not, that like, does it slow you down a little bit? Um, I don't know. I had it pulled back in a bun, so it wasn't, like, too bad, but I feel like it was heavier. Hey, good thing you're not going to BYU Idaho. Man buns aren't allowed. So, uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. But, but the, the speed is awesome. We were talking, uh, Parker, about is this group of receivers with, with Cody and Marcus McKenzie and company going to be the fastest in BYU history? I mean, you guys are all like, sub 10 seven guys uh what's yeah. that going to be like to to bring the speed to byu in the big 12 bro i think it'll be good um i know that byu hasn't been known for the fast guys but i think we'll change that definitely when we're all there and uh we'll turn some heads definitely to see if we're really if they think we're fast now the heads turning will be the dbs guarding you by the way that's the those yeah. are the heads that are turning yeah, exactly Parker Kingston with us on BYU Sports Nation, three-star recruit. Again, the 6A 100-meter champ in Utah, 10-5-3. Blazing. Yeah, super fast. Clearly faster <laughs> than some other uh, runners that have attempted certain sprints on BYU Sports Nation. Parker, he's talking about himself. He ran the 40 <laughs> a few years ago. He claimed it could be sub-5. Five. 5-1-6 five, unofficial, Parker. But listen. Hey, that's pretty good. All right, Listen. I'm 20 years removed from high school, man. Okay? <laughs> I'm trying. Pretty good. Let me ask you, why BYU for you? Because clearly you were highly recruited. You had several options. Everybody wants speed on their team. Why BYU for you coming out of Roy High School? Um, I like the culture that BYU had. Uh, I definitely like the coaches. Um, they made me feel a part of the team, even though I wasn't already and they melt, made me feel like they were family and they just did a really good job of bringing me in showing me around and I knew as soon as I got done on the visit and getting my offer I knew that that was the place okay Roy High School Jim McMahon the history there the uh the black and gold yellow yellow uh looks looks great what's the history of kind of Roy and do you feel any kind of kinship to Jim since you went to the same high school man um, yeah, I definitely do now that he went to Roy and BYU. I feel like it's like it's kind of cool. He followed me on Twitter the other day, which was kind of a nice. big deal. Nice. It was pretty sweet. So, yeah, I think it's it's a pretty pretty close, tight-knit thing. 
I, I, I assume off the field you're a little different than Jim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had to ask. Uh, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking with Parker Kingston. Clearly, speed is in your wheelhouse. What would you say is the best part of your receiver skill set at this point of your football career? I would say my hands. I feel like I have pretty sure hands. Um, I feel like I can get open, but we'll see what happens when we get to the college level. But I still feel like I can – I can do what I need to do to get open and catch the ball. I read that you really like Dax Milne in his game and feel like that's that's a comp for you. Um, is, is, yeah. is that is that it, okay? That's true. Um, how do you feel like you could be a Dax Milne type guy? Um, I feel like I can be that sure-handed receiver. Um, I feel like I can be that uh, comfort uh, type of receiver for the quarterback if he's ever in doubt that he can throw it, and I'll be there, but. We'll see what happens. Okay, so Dax Milne is clearly an NFL receiver you're trying to emulate. Are there any other receivers that you look closely at and watch them and try and implement their specific skill set into what you do? Definitely Cooper Cup. He's the one guy who I look at and I like, I want to be like him. I want to do what he does. So we'll see. Uh, Hard to argue with Cooper Cup. (laughs) Yeah, like the the greatest receiving year we've ever seen last year uh, in football history. It was, it yeah. was incredible. Okay, um, we know you have some personality because we follow you on the gram and a uh, little little dumber dumb and dumber action. Harry and Lloyd with one of your buddies from uh, yeah. Roy. That was that was, and I think yeah. we have a photo. That was awesome, man. Tell us about the inspiration to do that. Um, we've <laughs> wanted to do it for a long time, uh, and it doesn't fit me and him better than going out in our last dance is dumb and dumber because we've been buddies <laughs> since we were like eight years old and it, 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 nothing fits better. Did you have to have that custom made? Where did you get the suit? We got it on Amazon for 15 bucks. Fantastic. Whoa! A costume. Wow. Just a straight costume. That's yeah. amazing. I know what Spencer and I yeah. are doing for Halloween now. Yeah. yeah. We, we may have to just copy that. We, uh, we just have to copy it. And we saw the long hair, by the way, there from you in that photo. It was, yeah. It looked good, man. Parker, Thank you. and we're looking at your timeline, uh, both on social media and just in life in general, wondering what's next for you now that you're graduating from Roy and, and moving on. What's your timeline like over the next few months and into the next year? Well, I go down to BYU June 18th, and I start school and practices. So I don't. I have a little bit of summer, so I'm going to try and enjoy it with the friends back home and then you know, keep working, keep doing some training, and then go down June 18th, and I'm ready to compete. Nice. So it'll be fun to see you this freshman year. Any mission plans, or or will you play four years straight through? I think I'm going to play four years straight through. Gotcha. Okay, so the four years straight through. In year number one, you said you're going to compete and go. What type of an impact are you hoping to have in year number one? Um, I'm hoping to have an impact wherever uh, I can find a spot on the field. I don't care where it is, but if I can earn a spot, then I'll make an impact wherever I'm at. You've trained with Ross Oppo, a former BYU receiver. What has he said about the BYU experience and preparing you for this? Um, he said he uh, he loved it there. Um, he said he's super excited for me. He thinks I'll fit in well and do pretty good um, throughout my years. So I'm happy. Okay, we need to ask you about the Big 12. BYU making the transition to Power 5 status. You clearly are going to have a significant role in the BYU receiver staff when the Cougars make that jump to a Power 5 conference and the Big 12. How do you feel about that, and what was your uh, reaction to that when you found out that that was happening? Um, It was pretty sweet, you know, not like, I mean, being in a Power 5 conference is – that's pretty huge. Um, I'm excited for that. I think there will be some really good competition. You get to play teams that you uh, dream of playing against or just saying, wow, what if I played against them one day? And now, now I get to play against them. So I think it will pre- be a pretty surreal experience. Parker, were you already decided on BYU before that decision happened, or did it factor into you choosing BYU at all? Um, it factored in a little bit. But I was already decided that I was going to go there. And then 
I heard the talks and rumors of them going into the Big 12, and that also helped a lot. But I think I was pretty set on BYU no matter what. Hey, congratulations on everything in your high school career. We can't wait to see you down here in Provo. Uh, Good luck with the summer. Enjoy the time while you have it. We'll talk to you again soon here in Studio B. Okay, thank you. You got a Parker Kingston, BYU football commit, wide receiver, state champion in the 100 meters in Utah. From WA High School. (laughs) Roy, R-O-Y. Patrick. Patrick Waugh. Waugh. (laughs) <laughs> we're not in Colorado it's Avalon. not French <laughs> no it's America not. it's Roy we're not in Montreal <laughs> no he wasn't it, wasn't it John Elway that said why isn't it Roy because <laughs> he was in Denver <laughs> with Patrick Waugh who's in Colorado <laughs> it's all frustrated it's like <laughs> why isn't yours Elway yeah uh, uh he we learned something there he's gonna play four years straight through he's come through he's gonna compete right That's, now okay let's go baby let's go are we already hey. breaking down the future BYU wide receiver groups <laughs> no, but think about it, um, because this is this is a year where uh, he he's going to be a stud in the future. We think there's probably not going to be a ton of targets out there because you've got a real veteran group of receivers. But once Gunnar Romney and we think Puka Nakua are out, you're going to have an opportunity for yeah a speedster in the slot like Parker Kingston. Well, and you have to wonder with that type of speed. Uh, if he proves himself, kick return. Yeah, exactly. Punt on return. special teams, are you uh, are you a kick returner? I feel like punt returner is more. But he says he has great hands. Dax Milne was a punt yeah, returner. Yeah, no, no doubt. Okay. No, and he played quarterback as a junior and did not have a turnover that year. Look for as Parker a quarterback Kingston. who's running and throwing. If he wants to make an impact now, hey, why not look at special teams in year number one? Okay. Coming up, the men's golf team at Nationals playing its Sunday round today. Assistant coach Todd Miller gives us the skinny. Plus, a former Cougar football player is lifting the weight of a grizzly bear. No, that is not an exaggeration. And am I impressed by this? This is BYU Sports Nation. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. blanket of BYU Athletics. Turn TV time into together time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery and see families coming together while watching with your own. See new and original content, all for free, on the BYU TV app. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. He is Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton, and this is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get content throughout the day, you know where to go. All of the major social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and the TikTok. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Round presented by Maris, your integrated container logistics company, enabling global trade for a growing world. Jakob Hatch reports Missouri State will play uh, in Provo in men's hoops on November 16th. What do you think of the match? I love it. I feel like BYU earned that return matchup because BYU played a true road game and beat Missouri State 
last year. I wish that win would have been a little bit better, but it was still pretty solid last year on BYU's yeah. resume. Why the beep would BYU ever play at Missouri State if it wasn't going to get a home game, right, out of it? 23-11 uh, and 11 were the Bears. NIT first round loss to Oklahoma, 72 in net. So we're hoping this is a quad two game. It has to be between 31 and 75 next year. We've yeah. learned a few things. Yeah. We know that the San Diego yeah. State series is going to continue. So BYU will play San Diego State in Viejas. They will play Missouri State in Provo. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a game against Utah. And there's going to be a game against Utah State. I'm writing all this down. Okay. We know at least four of the non-conference games. My handwriting so bad quick. Like, look how bad that is. <laughs> so bad. Anyway. Yeah, I, I like the message. Thank you, great doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Jerem, you said earlier this week that you're not really impressed by strong guys, athletes, doing these feats of strength on social media. Like they're supposed Kyle Van Noy to. breaking the uh, yeah. duct tape, I you're, believe, you're was the NFL instigator like, of I'm this. I'm not impressed. I'm sorry. Well, Tijon Karoma may have changed your mind with this video. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's deadlifting the weight of a bear. <laughs> There's literally no more room on that bar to put on. They used all the 50s. Uh, are you impressed now by this? Yes, I'm absolutely impressed. <laughs> I feel like I said this to you in the moment it's when I saw a, well, it. Well, Kyle Van Noy and duct tape is different than that. I expect to see T. John competing yeah. in the world's strongest man at some point on ESPN2, watching it like 1.30 in the morning and, and when the I can't play sleep. And the play-by-play will be BYU be, alum Todd Harris. It'll be Todd Harris. Yes. Like doing just the car pull up a hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Like, uh, he'll be competing against guys named Lars. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> Lars and the Real Girl. Really right. weird movie. Anybody seen that one? <laughs> That movie's crazy. Anyway. Yeah, there'll be a Lars and a Kristoff, like these guys from Finland and Iceland, and then there'll be Tijan. Yeah, the mountain shows up, <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I am definitely impressed by that. But generally speaking, like, hey, I can do a lot of push-ups and sit-ups. I'm a pro athlete. It's like, it's what you do. That'd be like me saying, you know how many words a day I can fit in? How many thoughts I can cogitate? I'm paid to talk! By the way, that video came from the Michigan Panthers because Tijan is playing in the USFL. That's cool. That's great. Good for T. John. Yeah. Clearly, he's uh, strong enough. How many Panthers are at that level? I think that's a question that needs to be answered. <laughs> BYU baseball season ended last night. 5-1 loss to LMU in the West Coast Conference Tournament. How would you describe the season? Uh, impressive with a disappointing finish. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just so impressed with the ability of the team and the coaching staff to figure things out. When you think about that's losing... That's a Littlewood phrase you just said. Indeed. And he put them in a position leaving halfway through the season to figure some significant things out. What are you going to do? Are you going to buy in? Are you going to keep going? BYU went on a tear the back half of conference play, albeit yep. the schedule lightened up, but they still had to win a bunch of games. They did. Got to the number four seed, all with an interim head coach. And you're playing without your best player, Andrew Pintar, basically the whole season. And Cole Gamble sat out a good yes. deal of the season, and he's arguably the second or third best player. Yes, adding to that, fourth seed, really good, all things considered. I'm just pointing not to get into the double elimination portion, certainly, but 11-3 and three overall in the final 14, 9-2 and two in the final 11 West Coast Conference game. Tremendous year, given all the adversity. Because you can't control what's going to happen to you. You just have to control how you react to it, right? And I thought BYU reacted really well. Did they win eight conference games in a row in the back half? Eight or nine? I mean, that's so tough to do in baseball. It's crazy. No, what What are you, the Yankees? It just right does now, not like, happen. Crazy, yeah. Well, yeah. Great season. Well done. Tough finish. Yes. Stranger Things 4, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Top Gun Maverick headline a huge weekend of media content, Jerem. They all premiere this weekend. Which one are you going to consume first? Stranger Things 4, yeah. Oh, you're going to Stranger uh, Things? Absolutely, yeah. So they're dropping seven episodes, I think, and then they'll do, they'll do like a, another drop? In a couple weeks, yeah. Okay, so you're going all in on Stranger Things 4. Yeah, because I can watch all seven. To get Kenobi's ready. Kenobi's one a week. To get yeah. ready, are you? have you watched Stranger Things 3 again? No, I wish I would have. Okay. I have not created the time. Well, <laughs> because you've got like, I don't know, 28 things there's, going there's on other things and going a family on. and kids. Well, and... <laughs> here's the thing. Strange Things 3, I watched at like midnight to 8 a.m. straight through when it came out. <laughs> and then I like slept that whole afternoon. I was on vacation. <laughs> I was going to say, were you alone? On the, no, I was with my in-laws on the uh, Oregon coast and uh, yeah, could afford to like just not be helpful whatsoever. Because <laughs> yeah, once you, once you have kids, you have to be helpful. Hey.
for Hey, you guys got it. I'm out for the next 24 hours. Yeah, it wasn't that long, but yes. How about you? I- I'm all in on Top Gun Maverick. Nice. I have always been a Top Gun guy. Like, if you I gonna go of- see it this weekend? Absolutely. Nice. If I think of movies that I loved as a child, there are two that immediately float to the top: Back to the Future, future. and Top Gun. Yeah, these are epics, classics. Like, and they came out, I think, within the same calendar year. Right, because Back to the Future was 85 and then Top Gun was 86. Gotcha. And we were real little on those. Man, oh man, I was was five years old. Yeah. And I mean, those were like early childhood memories, and I love those movies from the get go. Speaking of, IGN reports Winnie the Pooh is being made into a horror film called Blood and Honey. What are we doing? Will you be watching this? No! This is ridiculous. Oh, Christopher Robin, come here. No! I'd like to stab you. Like, what? <laughs> what the heck is that all about? Eeyore, Eeyore is about to be real depressed in this oh, one. Oh, bother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, what, what the heck? You can't think of anything tigger. else. Leave, leave the pure, the purity of Winnie the Pooh alone. A Tigger is a Tigger with a knife. <laughs> My my three year old Tate knows deep in the he knows that whole song. We will not be showing him any image. I looked at like an image of this and I was like, oh my god, it's disturbing. No, that's enough. My We're kids not... just took pictures with all the Winnie the Pooh characters yes. in Disneyland. Yes, leave it alone. Why did one have a Bowie knife suddenly? This is insane. Oh my goodness. Coming up, more rational content. Yeah, like today's elite voices. Who oh, bother? Todd Miller, the director of golf honey, at BYU. Honey, 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 <laughs> no, honey. no. The coach will join us next. What's the ceiling for BYU golf at nationals? Like the, are they are they playing well to win this thing? This is BYU Sports Nation. Could Christopher Robin suit up for the Cougs this weekend? Hello, Christopher Robin. <laughs> heat getting set for success demonstrating their drive but when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again and you as well Intermountain Healthcare official medical provider for BYU athletics I know what it's like to be overlooked to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Sometimes life is a mystery. Sometimes it's an adventure. And even when things don't go as planned, we can still have hope. We can still be brave. We can still show kindness and even find a little bit of magic. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us Monday for a Memorial Day edition of BYU Football, the top 100 plays as we take you through the amazing catches, tackles, hits, and game winners Monday on BYU. It's at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. The show is on demand as well. If you want to watch it before Monday, go to the BYU TV app. Another disclaimer, it was put together after the 2020 season. It does not include any plays from the 2021 season. Yes, and we are too lazy to update it. We will at some point. Yeah. 
We will at some point. But we're too lazy to do it now. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station live from Studio B. Joining us now is the BYU Director of Golf, Coach Todd Miller, in Arizona as his team gets Let's ready go. for the NCAA Championships. Todd, congratulations on making it to the big show. We're so excited to be here. It's, we're, it's like coming home, be able to be here in Arizona, um, right next to Utah. Similar, you know, the ball goes a similar distance and elevation. So these guys are pumped. Yeah, an incredible run and performance in the regionals. I'd also like to congratulate you on having next level swag because whenever you or Coach Brockbank walk into Studio B, and again, not all coaches do this right, you create, your your mind has created some elite level golf swag. So you should be congratulated for that. We work hard on it. We want to see you wearing a little more of those polos, polos Spencer. You okay. asked me last time on the show how many I had. Well, what's your count now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you let's see. Uh, if we're just talking strictly BYU polos, man, probably like 50. But BYU golf polos, I'm only at like three or four. So, and and I'm at zero, Todd. Just so we're uh, <laughs> just so we're out here. You better come visit my closet, man. Heck yeah, dude, I'll be there. <laughs> Pluto's closet, Plato's closet, and Todd Miller's let's closet. Let's go, okay. Pluto. Todd, your team has, by the rankings, in many ways, already overachieved by qualifying for this final round of the NCAA championships. With how well they're playing right now, what's the peak for this team in 2022? You know, kind of answer that in kind of a little bit of longer um, dialogue. I mean, we started off the year and we finished first in our first event in New Mexico. By 19 shots, we won that tournament. Man. And then we just we just fell and we dropped and we dropped and we just got worse in the rankings. And by the end of the fall, we kind of hit rock bottom and you know, Bruce said to me, I remember at the end of the fall, he goes, I'm not ready to give up on this team. We're going to work hard. If we're going to play bad golf, we're going to be the hardest working team in the country. And he made some great changes. He brought in Daniel, who's been just such a delight to have on the team. He's helped these guys work smarter. He's been very scientific about what he's done with them. And then we've just started to gain every week. We've We've uh, we just gained a little more momentum every week, and it seems like you know these guys are playing their go best golf at the right time, which is awesome because not everything turns out like you want it to be, and you have to fight through a certain adversity. Some self-imposed, some not right. But I think about the coaching staff with you and Bruce, and now Daniel Summerhays, as you mentioned. That's an incredible amount of experience and swag, as you mentioned, Spencer. So now you head into this NCAA championships, and certainly. BYU not playing on Sunday is a big storyline. It always makes national headlines. You guys are going to compete in your Sunday third round today. What's the mentality and approach in a unique setting where you've, you've got to show up today, which is not going to count until the third round? Yeah, I mean, I think the first time we, we were able to play, you know, our Sunday round on a Thursday was in Oklahoma. And you know what? It was a very weird thing for us. We felt rushed. You know, you're playing all by yourself, which you never do in competition, it seems like, in golf. And we felt rushed. I walked with Patrick Fishburn, and I had walked hundreds of rounds with him. And I just couldn't get him in the right rhythm. And I think uh, we felt maybe a little better in Arkansas. And I think we're going to do a great job of it today, just taking some deep breaths, standing on the side, chatting a little bit. Summer Hayes was talking about the guys who just – you know, laugh, have fun, joke with each other, be, you know, be nice to yourself on the course. And I think that's that's going to pay off for us. That we're just getting a little more experience. And this isn't a new thing for us anymore. Luckily, Carson's already done it. He's excited about the opportunity. And all the other guys are just embracing it. Now, you brought up Carson Lundell. I mean, his emergence as mm. the number one has been fantastic. And for him to win that regional the way he did, how cool is that? He shared with us a story of you telling him, hey, I, I think you're going to win this thing, man. Like, go get it. Go do this. What was that like for you as his coach to watch him on those final few holes be in position to do that? Hey, we've, you know, I've walked a lot with Carson, and we've had some tough moments out there on the course. He's such a great player. I mean, he hits the driver so long. He's accurate with his irons. He's, to me, the best putter in the country. And, you know, he's had a lot of ties for first and for him, that's been frustrating. He wants to win outright. He wants to dominate and it, it really hasn't been there for him. And so I'm like, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to get in his face and I'm going to go, Carson, tell me you're going to win this tournament. Yes. You know, there's no, no more ties. You're just going to go win this thing. 
and he had four holes left. He had an easy par five that we were standing on in the fairway. And I'm like, let's let's make birdie or eagle and just just win this thing outright. And he repeated it back to me, and he got the win. And uh, you know, even on the 18, I remember him saying on your show that you know I had Summer Hayes just kind of stay there, and he's. <laughs> What's going on, Miller? And I'm like, <laughs> I, I wanted to go through every number. I walked up to that green before he hit the shot. I stepped it off to the foot where I wanted him to land that ball. And I wanted it to be right when he got there that he felt 100% confident. Because he was he had a tough shot. He was in the right rough. It was a flyer lie. The wind was down to the right. I mean, he had to land it in a perfect spot to get it, you know, where he could either make an easy par or a birdie. And uh, he hit the exact shot he needed to. And I was I was so pumped for the kid. It was just a big burden off of his shoulders. And, you know, he's just building a great resume for himself to play professional golf. And he won by a stroke. Every stroke matters. Every little piece of everything matters. Um, and Carson told us on the show, as you mentioned, he felt that BYU didn't play its best golf at the regional, yet took third to qualify. So where do you feel like you can play better golf in the championships to try and compete for a national title here. Well, at regionals, we got off to a pretty poor start. We had two doubles in the, in the first couple holes. And um, as a coach, I mean, it was a shot to the gut. I was like, man, I mean, this is not how I expected our team to come out on a pretty easy course, those first two holes. And then we just kind of, we weathered it and we started to play a little bit better, you know, every day. And, you know, for, our freshman, uh, Tyson Shelley, to come out that last round in birdie four of his first six holes, it was like, okay, you know, we deserve to be here. Yeah, we're, you know, we're ranked somewhere around 45th to 50th in the country, but we can play with Stanford. We can play with Arizona State. And so um, the great thing about the national championship is it's a stroke bait tournament, and we get a chance to qualify in that top eight and get into match play, and then it's just anybody's game. Uh, you only have to beat one team at a time. Yeah, let's walk through the dynamics of that because there are 30 teams. And so for those fans across BYU Sports Nation that are going to be watching you closely, what are the numbers that they need to hope that BYU is in position to hit so that you can get into match play by Monday? Okay, so we play our Sunday round today. And you won't be able to see that go in until everybody has finished the round on Sunday. So you start with 30 teams. They play Friday and Saturday and Sunday, and they cut it from 30 to 15. And then after that cut, you play on eight on Monday, and they cut it from 15 to eight. And then you go into match play on Tuesday and Wednesday. Those are the numbers. Congratulations on just an incredible run here in the postseason, Coach. Uh, we wish you and Bruce and Danny Summerhays and all the guys out there in Arizona the best of luck. We're sending you a huge amount of BYU Sports Nation yes. karma. We gave it to Bruce, and it worked at regionals. So hopefully that uh, streak continues there in Arizona for you. Hey, we have great karma. We had uh, Mike Weir that won here um, at this course. My dad was called the Desert Fox. So we have all <laughs> kinds of great That's karma. That's awesome more we can get from you guys i love it and tell the desert fox we say hello as well love the miller family congratulations coach we'll be rooting for you thanks guys appreciate it go kooks you got it todd go miller Cooks. with this on byu sports nation the director of golf so i'm headed to his closet after this right? tournament a lot of people don't know like todd has significant way on what uh carrie roberts and byu women's golf do as well like he's over all of that you're talking uh apparel no, well, not just that. Like coaching, like he consults with Kerry and BYU women's golf as well. Oh. Like he's over all of BYU. Oh, that's golf. cool. Yeah, he's... it's great staffs on uh, on staffs on both yes. uh, teams, man. It's awesome. Good luck, boys. Let's go. Coming up, did you get today's elite voice? Ooh, only one way to find out. You got to stay with us. Mm -hmm. Plus, the rise and shout out to resilient seasons and much more. And a belated happy birthday, for that matter. This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. 
Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Gather the family for a midweek pick-me-up with an all-new lineup Wednesdays on BYU TV. Is that cool? Is that okay? You want inspiring? Yeah, we got that. Fun? Definitely. And surprising? Well, you'll just have to find out. Enjoy a marathon of good works to lift and inspire you for the rest of your week. See it all Wednesdays on BYU TV or anytime on the free app. When I was about your age, I was sent to stay with my grandpa. Come on. Hello. Where did you come from? I have a good feeling about us. I think we're going to be best mates. Dogs don't sleep in the house. Hello, Mick. Please, call me Betty. Miss, me mum. Just Betty. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. For download the pod, man. Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. Don't forget to tune in, uh, subscribe, rate, and review the show. Chaw. You sound like the turtle from Finding Nemo. <laughs> yes. Little man. Yeah, man. Ride the wave. Ride it. There's a, there's a TikTok IG reel kind of, uh, you know, sound right now that where someone like tonight will be the night that i would fall for you but it's like emo <laughs> hair on a cat <laughs> have you seen that no we will be concerned over that after the again show. <laughs> our question of the day it's 100 days until byu football opens their season against usf what are you most confident in and what's your biggest question mark 100 days out our elite voice of the day presented by sundance mountain resort from at Cody Carlock on Instagram. That sounds like the mascot of a business. Cody. Hi, I'm Cody Carlock. <laughs> if you lock your keys in your vehicle. Uh, Cody says, super confident in the BYU offense. Every piece seems solid. Okay. The linebackers and secondary will be stalwart as well. Only question mark is the defensive line. A lot of returning guys that have something to prove. I'm excited for them to have that chance to prove it. Let's go. All right, today's Rise and Shoutouts presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Can we do a little pat on the back real quick? BYU Radio just wrapped up last night, August to May, every weekend. Games, games, Greg, Jason, others, awesome. BYU TV Sports wrapped up over the weekend as well. We did 156 games over, uh, you know, since August, all the studio shows. Nice job to our crew. All right, and a happy belated birthday to Ashley Hatch, who is crushing it in professional and United so States women's national soccer. So good. Our thanks to today's guest, Parker Kingston, and we just talked to Todd Miller of BYU Golf. Start to Dennis, no time. For Jerem, I am Spencer. A shout out to Bruce Summerhays. Go Cougs.